The roll call. Mm -hmm. Oh, Fred Townsend, town solicitor. Marty Tarr, member of the election board. Elaine Bowl, member of the election board. Gloria Rogers, member of the election board. This is the total election board right here, all of the officials. Um, I'm now going to turn this over to our solicitor mm -hmm. to brief us on today's proceedings. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bowl. Um, I want to start with a housekeeping matter and just acknowledge that this meeting is scheduled on an expedited basis. It is um, so scheduled, though, in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act, which typically requires a seven-day uh, notice. However, this is a 10-day period within which we must, under state law, hear this, this complaint. And due to the availability of our members and uh, myself, um, and thanks to the cooperation of uh, Mr. Rowe, we were able to settle on, on this date um, for conducting this hearing. So I just want to note that uh, additionally that while the uh, agenda was posted, um, the uh, restated reason um, for a better stated reason for why we are uh, here with less than seven days notice is because of exigent circumstances being a duty to convene the Board of Elections within 10 days of receipt of a challenge and due to limited availability of board members. And I'll add myself to that. Uh, mix as well. Okay, so um, next in our proceedings, um, we're going to hear a, uh, a contest or a challenge or a complaint uh, filed by uh, Mr. Rowe, who is a candidate for council. Um, Mr. Rowe, if you would, um, would you please take the podium and I'd like to ask you on the record to state your name, address, and I will swear you in. Philip Rowe, 7 Cullen Street, Dewey Beach, Delaware, 19971. Mr. Rowe, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony given in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. So, Mr. Rowe, um, you know, I note that you're here without counsel, and um, I want to uh, extend to you um, uh, my appreciation for the manner in which you've conducted yourself uh, through the prior proceedings, and uh, I'm sure how you will uh, conduct yourself today will be commendable as well. Um, I recognize uh, that you are under a good bit of pressure, both internal and perhaps external. You have a number of supporters, obviously, who, who are urging you on. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, also that uh, your opponent has a number of supporters, and this is a difficult process for um, your opponent to undertake, um, for the town as well. These election officers did probably never in their wildest uh, imagination dream that they would be here in, in such a uh, circumstance. Yeah, they're not alone. <laughs> um, uh, given the fact that um, you're unrepresented, and even if you were represented, you can anticipate in a matter such as this that you would be uh, asked by the court, and I should point out that this group is sitting in a quasi-judicial uh, proceeding. So this, this group is acting as a court in hearing this complaint. Um, your complaint was, was noticed, if you will, by email on Saturday night following the election, and I believe on Monday morning we received a written complaint um, uh, signed by yourself on 9-23-19. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So we've got some preliminary issues to get through, Mr. Rowe, and you could anticipate that if, uh, if you were in court with this proceeding, that the court would have a number of questions for you, and I'd like to begin that process now. Sure. So, Mr. Rowe, your complaint identifies um, uh, a couple of irregularities. Um, I think in terms of how it falls in your complaint, again, uh, of September 23rd, 2019, you cite the, pros the, the prospect of illegal votes having been cast uh, by some people who were ineligible to vote. Is that right? 
No, I said it was possible because I didn't have uh, a li list of voter registration. I'm sorry, absentee voters, so it was impossible to know. I happen to know my mother was on the voter registration, and I suppose she could have voted. Mm -hmm. Well, do, uh, do that was my only point there mm -hmm. is that there could be. Okay. I thought it was something that should be looked at, but I'm not here to register that complaint. You're not registering the complaint that no. illegal votes were cast. Okay, no. thank you. So that is cited, but I'm happy to to set that aside. Um, uh, number two, um, you are raising an issue regarding the manner in which your opponent represented himself in his filings with the town clerk as a candidate for office, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, and further, you request that, and if I could use, or you cite the, the, the notion or the idea or the fact that the machine ballots listed uh, your opponent as a resident and that the uh, absentee ballots listed him as a non-resident, correct? Yes. And cite that that uh, could have created confusion among the voters. I believe it could. Mm -hmm. um, you conclude by saying the ballot issue is disqualifying. In my mind. So That's my are, opinion. So you're asking for the, this group to set aside the results of the election, is that right? Not wholly on that point alone. Can you explain? Yes, I have other points that, that I think are even more valid in the case, but I, I still think that uh, I think that my campaign and my supporters were harmed by that action. Okay, I want to make sure I understand this because you know we're here on the you know we're here on a very expedited basis, and that you have submitted a writing which indicates what your complaint consists of. You've abandoned the legal voter um, element of right. it, and instead you are focusing on or you wish to pursue the complaint that. Um, Mr. Bauer misrepresented his residency Correct. on his submission, right? Yes. Um, and on that basis, you're asking this group to set aside the election results, is that right? Correct. Okay, now, Mr. Rowe, I need to point you to a provision in Delaware law and ask you whether, and again, I acknowledge that you're not represented by counsel, um, 7557A of Title 15 reads <coughs> complaint procedure um, indicates that unlawful election activity altering uh, the result of the election. A citizen of a municipality may submit a written complaint to the state election commissioner regarding any aspect of that municipality's election activity that is contrary to state or federal law which altered or reasonably likely to have or is reasonably likely to have altered the result of the election. Such complaint shall be filed no later than 20 days after the result of the municipal election and shall have been certified by, or 20 days after the result is certified by the municipal board. So have you considered that? Yes. Have you, have you made that complaint? I have not because I understood from the last time we were here that you were saying that I had to go through this process first and then I could appeal. I believe you told me that I could appeal to the state. Well, I, I certainly meant to suggest that you have a right of appeal from this proceeding. Okay. Um, although, I think, yeah, I take this with a grain of salt. I, I, I can't represent both this board and, and sure. you, and you're not no, looking to me for legal advice. Right. But w I, I would have indicated, and I'll reassert today, that any decision made by this group may be appealed to the State Board of Election or directly to the Superior Court. Okay. Now, Understood. I would advise you to confirm that and not rely on it just based on what I'm telling you for those reasons. Okay. So I'll go further to say that you have, um, you have rights as a, as a citizen, and I have read uh, just now from a procedure that is afforded uh, citizens, um, you have rights as a candidate. Um, those rights are expressed in Chapter 59 of Title 15. Um, those rights are somewhat different than, than these. Uh, okay. And you have a, additionally a potential right of appeal. 
as would anyone else who felt aggrieved by the decision of, of this body. Understood. Um, those time frames are exceedingly short for anyone who's um, following along. Um, Can you reference those time frames? Well, again, I don't want you to rely on my advice, but I but Understood. I think you might find you've got 48 hours from the date we issue oh, our yeah, yeah. written opinion. That. Okay. Okay. So, um, next I want to turn to the issue of this body's authority to settle complaints. So I referred initially to section 7557A, complaint procedure, unlawful election activity altering result of the election. Um, that proceeding is to begin with a written complaint to the state election commissioner. Now I'm going to turn back to the jurisdiction in the code that is afforded the Board of Elections. And that can be found at 7552 of the state code. And it refers to co the complaint procedure in the event of receipt of a pre-election activity complaint. And it says um, that a citizen of the municipality may submit a written complaint regarding any aspect of the pre-election activity that, that is contrary to the provisions of subchapters four and <laughs> five of this chapter. Okay. Um, subchapters four and five of this chapter refer to uh, a number of items regarding the nature uh, of the election and how the election is to proceed. Um, uh, for example, the um, that section indicates that if there was a pre-election activity such as the town having published the wrong time for the closing of the machine polls, you would have a, a, any citizen would have a right to challenge that. If someone's name was spelled incorrectly on the ballots, um, that would be pre-election activity that is firmly within this group's um, jurisdiction to hear and to resolve by ordering that the pre-election action or activity was legally incorrect and ordering lawful action necessary to correct such legal error in the pre-election action or activity. Now I want to point out to you that if there were to be an appeal from a decision of this Board of Adjustment, the code requires that that appeal be taken no later than 48 hours before the election which strongly suggests that pre-election action and um, uh, matters that someone might wish to challenge uh, regarding subchapters four and five of Title 15 need to be brought in advance of the election and not after the election. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, only that it was, un was not until the uh ballot issue and the state mandated recount that I was um, made aware of the errors in the filing. Right. So that's a, that's a fair response. Um, Mr. Rowe, the allegations that you're making um, regarding your opponent's residency emanate from the uh, filing that he made with the town. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and I think it's your testimony that you discovered. I'm sorry, I want to amend that. Yes, and I understand they also go to the state because they're part of a state held uh, an election held in Delaware. Okay, but the, so th that may be the case that the that the submission uh, is received by us and transported a copy to another. Okay. Um, all right. So as a result of hearing reports that... I just want to clarify mm -hmm. that. Uh, the filing you sent to Sussex County, correct? Yep. Okay. So, all right. So the filing is here and simultaneously to Sussex County? Could you please tell them the process? Okay, all right, that's, that's a late, later process. Yep, yeah, I've got you, okay. Um, all right, so um, Mr. Rowe, question for you. Um, 
you just indicated that it was by virtue of the inconsistency between the absentee ballots and the machine ballots that you came to this realization that there may be an issue with with your opponent's residency. Is that right? That's when you learned of it. No, I knew I knew he had filed as a resident sooner than that, but I wasn't looking into his residency in any way until that the election occurred and the vote was so close that it required a mandated recount and that the ballot issues existed. Okay. So, Mr. Rowe, you're saying at an earlier point in time you learned that, or you came to understand that Mr. Bauer was running as a resident? Yes. Um, and you're contesting that today, correct? You're contesting that he's a resident yes. today. But Mr. Bauer, or, or excuse me, Mr. Rowe, um, um, why did you not, why did you wait until after the election to raise that issue? Because I hadn't done any research into it and I was not aware that he w wasn't acting as a resident. Mm -hmm. Had I been aware of any activity that would have strongly indicated that he's not, I would have taken those steps right away. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you're running a campaign, you can't know everything all the time. So, uh, Mr. Rowe, I'll just I'll ask if you are aware that the submissions that were made by the candidates, including yours, are deemed to be public records uh, that could be accessed through a request of the town. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it is not your contention then that um, should your opponent be deemed to be a non-resident or were he to be deemed to be a non-resident that he would be ineligible from, from running for office. I'll restate that. If you're not contending that only residents can hold office in the town of Dewey Beach, are you? No. Because yes. because your opponent ran as a non-resident two years ago, correct? correct? So you're asking this group to speculate, are you not, as to what the impact of that representation was at the voting booth? No, I'm not. And can you please explain? Um, the paperwork, as it turns out, submitted is fraudulent, and that's my claim. All right. Well, and there's a penalty in the town charter for fraudulent filing. So at the very least, that should be addressed and pursued. Well, that, that's, your, that's your contention, that it's fraudulent. Yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about residency. Um, would, it, would it be... Um, do you acknowledge that there's uh, a bright line test for establishing residency and a subjective prong of that test as well? And again, I, I'm not holding you to the same standards as uh, your, your attorney if you were represented, but I will ask you this I, way. I don't really know the answer to okay, that. I that's haven't fine. had time to consider that. That's a fair, fair answer. but. Um, I'm going to indicate to you that residency, uh, the bright line test for establishing residency is going to be whether there is a dwelling in the jurisdiction that, that one could intend to make their primary residence. Could or does? Could, could. No, I'm, I'm saying that's prong one. That's prong one. So, so if, if, if your opponent owned a restaurant and no dwelling in this jurisdiction, you would be contesting whether he is even eligible to run, correct? I don't know the rules for restaurants, so I can't answer that either. Okay. Well, you acknowledge that your opponent owns a dwelling in this jurisdiction, correct? Yes. And you acknowledge that that in and of itself is sufficient to allow you to be a candidate in for office, right? Yes. The, the subjective aspect of it is um, what the owner's of that residence intent is with regard to that residence. And we can talk about that. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to suggest to you that that this body, and I, I, I'll ask you to speak to it again, um, this complaint 
could have been raised in time for this group to address it uh, prior to the election? And, uh, and do you not acknowledge that it is prejudicial to your opponent that it would be the subject of consideration after the election? As long as he acknowledges that fraud is prejudicial to mine. <laughs> Um, I didn't hear what he as, as long as he acknowledges that fraud is a disadvantage to my campaign. Well, Mr. Rowe. If uh, you're not going to hear any of the merits of what I'm saying, and you're just going to give me the fifth degree as to why I'm here, uh, you know, I might as well just go file with the state well, and sue him in civil court. Well, I believe that's the appropriate place for your complaint, but I would, I'm, I'm not in, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to disallow you from from continuing, you know. With okay, I just don't know where we're going. So. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> I'm serving. This is actually very helpful for the board. Mm -hmm. Sure, okay. So please be open to it. Yeah, yes. I'm open to it. Okay. I just, because it's your, it's, it's going on for a long time and I don't know, you know. What, right. Well, going. again, I, I am not unsympathetic to your position. Um, I can tell you that <laughs> if you filed in court for some kind of a, a injunctive relief, you would be in a similar scenario. You would, you would be answering a lot of questions of, of the court. Understood. Okay. <clears throat> but I haven't done that. Mm -hmm. No, but this proceeding is, is a quasi-judicial proceeding. It is not a proceeding where we have a complaint and an answer and a reply, and we have weeks to consider um, the written completings. Uh, we don't have briefs. And this group will tell you that they that they have not been briefed on the law, and that this is my effort to do that for them, um, and to sure. give you an opportunity to address the components of the of the law as well. Um, I'm trying to give you the best answers I can. Yeah. Based on Again, um, I appreciate the manner in which you're conducting yourself today and has and have done so to date. Um, okay. I want to ask you whether it's your position or or alternatively to acknowledge that the town upon receipt of a candidate's package to run for office is under no obligation to do any kind of in-depth investigation of the representations made in that package. I'll acknowledge your statement. I don't have any way to verify that for you. <laughs> right. Well, um, just for this group's benefit, um, there's nothing in our code, and in fact, there's case law in other jurisdictions that states in the absence of affirmative duty on the part of a town clerk or any election official to investigate a candidate's submission for truthfulness, um, there is none. Okay, so my, my point to you in this is that your uh, concerns about the submission um, uh, arose uh, later in the, in the course of the election than, um, than they could have. You've acknowledged by your testimony that they came to light uh, later yep. in the proceedings. Um, had had uh, you asked for and received a copy, and you would have, of those filings, their, their public records, it wouldn't have required any length of time to get approval for them to be uh, uh, provided to you. Um, this cause of action, if you will, could have arisen earlier. Um, do you have any comment about that? Not at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Mr. Rowe, your complaint, again, um, dated September 23, 2019, asks this group, in essence, to set aside the results of the election and cites that misrepresentations were made by your opponent in, in the submission of the complaint. 
significant, yes. Um, Mr. Rowe, I'm gonna let you speak to those misrepresentations. However, um, we're, there isn't any need to get into deep detail ab about them uh, at this point because they are merely allegations and they were not raised in time for this group to entertain them um, before the election. And I've cited the state law that uh, affords you as a citizen uh, an opportunity to, to make your complaint to the state elections commissioner. I'm not here to encourage or discourage you from doing that. I encourage you to get uh, legal advice, um, proper legal advice in moving forward. Um, but if you could briefly state your concerns for this board, I would uh, appreciate it. Sure. So. I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Yeah. Um, please realize that allegations will be very, I, we want to hear what you have to say, but if there is things that are just allegations, it's not fair to have them spoken. I will hit the gavel, ask you to stop it under the, the support of the attorney. And, and my, for my argument is I have allegations, <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly how I well, uh, state my case with no allegation. Well, Mr. Rowe, you, you've, this group is stuck with the four corners of this complaint. So do you have matters which you wish to bring to the Municipal Board of Elections that are beyond the four corners of this complaint? Because if you do, I would suggest that they not be raised because they are not, they're not in order. So in a sense, you're saying you want to hear my argument, but you've already told me you're not going to well, take into account my argument? I'm, I'm a little un uncertain what you're right. saying. Right. Mr. Rowe, what I'm saying is that you have expressed the, the uh, complaint that you had a right to bring mm -hmm. um, in the four corners of this document. We're under extremely tight time frames for, for uh, addressing your complaint. And we're not here to hear matters other than what you're referring to in this complaint in this written complaint. Well, without comparing my current presentation with that complaint, I don't know how I can answer that. Because mm -hmm. I don't remember every word I wrote on Saturday night or mm -hmm. Monday morning. So it kind of... Do you want ref your yeah, memory you refreshed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just... Do you, you need a few minutes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can we take a break for five minutes? Mm, recess for four three minutes or until Mr. Rowe is ready to proceed. Okay, recess. Can you define how you're using the term issue in this case? Issue? Yes. Issues. Um. Because there's, there's major things and then under that there's a lot of other things which some of which I may raise as new points on the matter. <laughs> so I don't want to. Well, I presume they all relate to residency. But, I mean, if, if it doesn't relate, if it, it, you've conceded that a non, are you ready to proceed? I mean. I think I am. <laughs> but but. You, you've conceded that 
um, a non-resident who owns property in Dewey Beach is eligible to run. Right. So when I say residency, it's not the only thing. There's the issue that you don't want me to talk about, which is, uh, you know. Speak closer to the microphone. Yeah, I it's hard for me. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. <clears throat> I have allergies. I think you can pull it up like that. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about Article 3 Offenses, Section 85-877, which is something I didn't raise in this letter, but I talked about. So if that's what's going to get gaveled, then I probably want to seek another venue. Mr. R Mr. Rowe, I'm, I'm, um, I'm prepared to advise this group that it lacks jurisdiction to set aside an election which has already occurred. Okay. Um, and that I've indicated to you that there is relief available to someone in your circumstance in another forum. Right. Um, I mean, my, one of my issues is all the people that supported me and contributed to the campaign mm -hmm. are out money because of this filing so you know it's it's an unfair filing it's an illegal filing under the town's own charter if there's nothing to be done about somebody running for one of the highest offices in the town violating the town's charter we have no rules well M mr Rowe, i'm not saying that there's nothing to be done okay i'm saying that it can't be done here i guess i'm saying that this group is is not able to set aside the results Understood. of an election okay. um, for unlawful activity. This yeah. group is not in a position to determine whether a crime has been committed um, uh, or whether the law has been abided by with respect to those representations. Understood. Now, if, um, if this had been raised at its you know, weeks ago. Sure. Um, if it had been raised towards the end of August, this group could have gotten together and and we could have had maybe a more meaningful exchange. Um, but uh, it is not appropriate. Um, there's a doctrine of latches which indicates that you, you can't sit on your, your rights. And if this cause of action existed, it should have been brought at the first reasonable opportunity, not after the election when it's an extremely prejudicial um, uh, uh, effect or has an extremely prejudicial effect on your opponent. Your rights are no less important than your opponent's rights, but your obligation in this case, as I will advise this group, is um, to raise a complaint such as this before this board at the earliest opportunity and not after the election. Understood. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put everybody through this for for that. Um, I'll move to the next venue. All right. Well, I I appreciate that. I'm not. I, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to advise this group with regard to the making of a motion. And we'll see where that goes. If 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 the motion is uh, doesn't carry, then maybe we'll hear more from you before this these proceedings are over. Okay. Um, under under these circumstances, I don't anticipate hearing from any other witnesses. Um, we will, as posted on the agenda, um, take public comment afterwards. Sure. All right. And you don't have to take your your seat now if you don't wish to. We'll see what happens. But I. At this point, I would advise the uh, board to conclude that it lacks the jurisdiction to set aside the result of an election, um, and that alternatively, um, the complaints uh, are barred, time barred, for, for not having been brought in time for this group to consider them before the election. And for those reasons, I would recommend that you entertain a motion to deny the complaint. Do we? Do I hear a motion to deny the complaint? I make a motion to deny the complaint. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 
All opposed say nay. Aye. Aye. For the record, there are no opposed. It's unanimous. There, there's no opposed. Okay. Thank you. Hearing none, the motion to uh, deny the complaint is carried. Okay, next, I think we're ready for public comment. Yeah, before we do the public comment, um, and I really understand, and we all really do appreciate and uh, all everybody's effort. So um, please be aware that, that we all feel that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I hate. So, so a written decision will be issued um, by this time tomorrow from which there is a right of appeal. Uh, again, I suggest that you um, seek counsel or at the very least refer to the code um, uh, closely in terms of preserving uh, your appeal rights. And we've also talked about um, rights to make a complaint to the state board of elections. And I want to say for both candidates, this is not specifically we feel we we appreciate the honorable behavior today. Uh, but I do want to uh, address and have uh, the attorney address for the Board of Election. We've been, specifically I've been, uh, inundated with uh, requests for information and discussion on this particular topic, especially information. And I want, it on the record, what that's not to do that. OK. <laughs> well, uh, I can't, I, I'm, uh, I'm being asked to point out that at this stage of the election that any uh, public documents um, are in the possession of the town. Uh, they are not in the possession of any individuals, including the chairwoman of the Board of Elections. So if uh, additional information is sought by anyone, whether it be an independent thinking citizen or by Mr. Rowe or any of his supporters or Mr. Mr. Bauer, um, those requests are to be put to the town, um, and this committee is, is, doesn't possess those documents and will not be replying to any requests put to them. Is, okay. that what you, is that what you wanted to hear? I also want a little support for Ashley, too, <laughs> even though, because now it's like they have the one person, but to explain that that as well is a reasonable time for her to be able to process whatever their requests are, and that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but thank you very much. Okay, so um, uh, the next thing we have is, um, is there any further discussion on this topic? And do you have any further discussion that you'd like to add to this topic? No, just that we do our best job mm -hmm. for the town mm -hmm. as a volunteer <clears throat> to make certain that everything is carried out by the law, the code. Mm -hmm. And I think we've done a pretty good job uh, in the past and in this election as well. But I thank everybody that came out to, to the election and the way you've all conducted yourselves today. Thank you for coming. I concur. We have, uh, I've done this for um, three or four years. I've been proud to <clears throat> be part of the Board of Election in our town and um, like she said, we do our absolute best, and you know I think that was proven because our recount was exact. And um, you know, sorry that we find ourselves in this position the week after the election. Very sorry. Uh, and next on the agenda is uh, public comments. We're allowing public comments um, three minutes. Uh, we will not be answering questions. We will just allow you to say whatever you'd like to say. And uh, it's not an opportunity for open dialogue. Maybe we could see a raise of hands of how many people might like to to speak. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's a great. I like that. That's anonymous. <laughs> okay. That's anonymous. Good. Anonymous? No. <laughs> okay. Unanimous. Unanimous. <laughs> Okay, okay, it's unanimous then that no one wants to speak. I want to, that's a first in this town. Um, and uh, I guess that we can, uh, a, a motion to. You can entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Mm -hmm. Second. Do you, uh, do you second it? I second it. Okay, the 
This is on the back. Uh, I do hear a motion to adjourn. Do, do I hear a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. We are adjourned.